thing is I think it is not just about tax credits, but about partnering and using, we're able to get some of the city civic people and we're really working hard to, to try to raise a regional film fund specifically for this, but basically, you know, to try to partner and, and lessen the risk and give producers more ownership because right now, you know, if producers can own it, well, Chris, why don't you talk about that model of, you know, a different way of doing this, if you don't mind. Okay. Oh, this wasn't under the definition of regional production, I just want to say. So I'm <laughs> less prepared for this. But the, the theory for me is that, that the technical revolution, besides all the stuff we talked about, also gives you a chance to deliver your content to people much easier. Whereas before, when you were financing movies, as, as John said, his company is about, well, does this have a chance to get theatrical distribution? You know, today that's not necessarily what you have to have in order to have a success, making a movie or making a television show or doing whatever. And I would encourage you guys, if you're stuck with, I want to have a giant premiere and see my movie in a multiplex, just get over that because that's not the way it's going gonna, it's gonna to keep going. What that does, though, it gives an opportunity for talent to have a much more direct relationship with the audience. You actually can talk to people directly. You can work with them. You can learn what they like. You know, people like Robert Rodriguez down in Austin, you know, he's got a studio, he's building a thing, Tyler Perry in Atlanta, other people, you know, they're basically selling the shit themselves, you know, and they're, it's a generational thing. You don't need to be there. And so what, what my view was, was that the other thing you can do, because in some ways the film studios are giving us all an opportunity because they're so doggedly focused on these giant movies. And if there's anyone in here who can finance a $200 million movie, I'd like to meet you. But my <laughs> gut is that most of you can't finance a $200 million movie, and that's going to be their differentiating factor. But there's a lot of great movies, and certainly the movies in my career didn't cost $200 million. Good Will Hunting was $20 million. bucks. American Pie was $8 million. bucks. I made a little movie called Waiting that has a television show and a series and was with Lionsgate that you know we made for $2 million. bucks. And I think the point is that the audience is out there. I mean, you got YouTube guys who are getting 600 million hits on something they made for five grand. So the, the point is, what, what I keep trying to encourage people is, yes, we all talk about the incentives, and it is the biggest single number that affects the budget because it's so big and it affects literally all of the money. But now, because of the competition, you get a lot of states that are getting smarter. You get a lot of states that are, and I hate to say it that way, but we sort of benefit from the competition between the states. People will undercut each other. People will say they'll do different things. The reason Georgia, for instance, is winning right now is because they've decided that above the line, which is your actors and your directors and writers, is unlimited. Whereas New York has a limit, New Orleans has, a, you know, Louisiana had a limit. Now they don't have a limit. Now they're thinking about putting a limit back on. But like, if you're making a movie with a bunch of stars, so like w we did American Reunion there, which was the fourth American Pie, and a movie like that, budgets like significant amount of money, but 80% of it is above the line, because you're just trying to get all 19 of those idiots back into the movie, right? <laughs> so the, the, the number to actually make the movie is basically the same as it was the first go-round. But so Atlanta ended up being the choice, not that it had any bearing on Michigan or, you know, whatever else. But so what I'd say is if you're living in one of those areas and you came into one of these things, there's other things like Cruise, which Carl has touched on, but there's also equity and there's banking. Um, you know, a lot of these things that he's talking about, like debt is a part of it. There are local regional banks who could become part of it. There's also selling the tax credit. You know, a lot of budgets right now are around 75, I don't know what you guys are getting, 80 maybe, 88% on the tax credit. You just go to your local bank and say, hey, why don't we give them 92? You go, you know, that's the other reason Atlanta can go as high as they want is they got Coca-Cola and Turner and, you know, all these giant companies that have a ton of tax credit availability so they can turn over the tax credit. Pittsburgh happens to have that also. There's a ton of companies there that, that have tax credits. But there's a lot of ways for you guys, if you're coming here to try to figure it out, rather than figure out how to move to LA and become a producer, figure out how to make other levers besides just the tax credit be important. And part of that's the crew, part of that's the service, like what Steel Town's offering. Part of that is also these other little costs that will add up and benefit. You know, New Orleans had a time where they had a bank now. And anybody from New Orleans, I apologize, or Louisiana for this comment right now, but <laughs> it was very Louisiana how it worked in Louisiana. And so there was some cash that went places, and guy financed one of my movies is in prison now. But but there's there's probably a way to do it where they're not in prison. But the point was they they had a system where there was a bank that would also front load the tax credit. Like the other problem with tax credits for an independent producer is. 
you don't get the money right away. You got to wait. You got to turn in all the money. Well, so you go to a bank and you say, okay, why don't you loan 80% against the tax credit? Well, if you can give me real cash, that matters, you know? And so there's a bunch of different levers that you guys in your own community could affect by finding the properties. And so that's part of what I say with, with Carl is that there's less risk today on, on a certain budget level because you can actually market it and get it out there yourself and you have these massive machines in the social networking for word of mouth marketing where people tell each other about it and they get access to it.